So we're very happy that Google has uh, sponsored the Git conference this year. Uh, we rely on Google uh, uh, sponsors to make this conference possible. And so please help me welcome Jonathan Bingham from Google. Thank you first uh, to George Church, to Jason and Madeline and the organizers of this conference. Um, I think it's been fantastic yesterday and today. And thanks most of all to all of you for coming um, and for giving your samples and being uh, at the leading edge of, of sharing uh, genomic information. Um, so in Google Genomics, um, we're interested in kind of the, the nexus of life sciences and data science. Um, if you were here yesterday, uh, you may have um, uh, given multiple samples. You may have given blood for complete genomic sequencing. Uh, you may have had your face super glued to a glass slide to collect mites. Uh, you may have collected uh, swabs to collect the microbes from underneath your arms. And you may have collected another swab to take back with you to your hotel room um, for a gut microbiome sample. So you know that collecting life science information um, is relatively easy if you, you participate in studies and come to conferences. Making sense of it, if you tried to look at the data that comes out of that can be quite a bit more difficult. Um, and so as you all know, sequencing has changed tremendously over the past decades uh, from something where uh, samples were prepared by hand, measurement was done by eye looking at gels, uh, sequences were written out with a pencil in a laboratory notebook, um, to today, uh, by contrast, where there's robotic sample preparation, um, there's semiconductor manufacturing for the consumables that go into sequencing instruments, there's uh, digital high-definition cameras that do the measurement, followed by sophisticated image processing algorithms, and information is written out um, onto hard drives uh, and perhaps stored um, in the cloud. Um, the growth of data has been phenomenal, and to pick just one data point, um, when we reach a world where one million genomes have been sequenced, that will be 100 petabytes um, of raw information. That's a crazy amount of information, um, and making sense of that is a real challenge. So that's an interesting number because, uh, by coincidence, that's order of magnitude the size of Google's search index. Um, and meanwhile, Google search results are returned in a quarter of a second. Uh, we also, of course, are uploading 100 hours of video to YouTube per minute. Uh, there are 500 million Gmail accounts. Uh, there's Google Maps, which has uh, detailed information even at the street level um, from a lot of the planet. Um, so definitely Google has some expertise with data science. Um, bioinformatics has advanced tremendously as well from the early days where multiple sequence alignments were done by hand um, to some great algorithms that have been developed, things like uh, the revelation of dynamic programming, that you can have a computer do a sequence alignment to match them, uh, things like hidden Markov models to find genes, uh, and more recently, things like de Bruijn graphs to do genome assemblies. So there have been tremendous advancement, advances, and Google's interested in bringing these things together. So the question is how? Um, well, the first and most important thing um, is to be here and to be involved in the conversation. So we're very excited to have joined the Global Alliance for Genomics and Health. Uh, this is an, a, co a consortium of over 150 organizations. It's research hospitals, it's universities, it's patient advocacy groups, it's public health. Um, and we're working together with this community um, to define the data science side to help genomics. This includes things like a programming interface that will allow for interoperability so that data, whether it's living in the cloud or on a local data center, can work with the same tools. And tools that are written to use a common interface uh, can, can access this data and interoperate. Um, we are hosting data from the Thousand Genomes Project and also the public data that you have all shared um, for the Personal Genome Project. We also have put together a series of open source examples um, using these interfaces to work with the data. So just first, uh, here's where you can go to look at what we're working on, developers.google.com slash genomics. We also have a GitHub repository where there's open source um, code showing examples in languages like Java and Python and R, um, also using some algorithms like MapReduce for distributed computing to work with it. For all of you here, the Personal Genome Project uh, data, if you have contributed complete genomic sequencing, we are hosting a copy of this for you and you can access it on the Google Cloud. Uh, come see me if you'd like more information about that. 
we're very happy to be able to make this available. We think this is a great asset um, to the research community. And so from that, I'd like to, to talk about another example. Since I'm going before David Altshuler, I thought I would talk about something that, hap that we worked on before the Google Genomics team formed. Um, and this was a collaboration that we did with the Broad Institute looking at variant call data. So if you've participated in complete genomic sequencing or 23andMe, you have variant calls from your genome. Um, when you have a large population or group of people um, who have variant calls, um, you can start to ask some interesting questions of it. Um, and so as a start at Google, what we did is we took a system that we built for looking at logs data. Um, so looking at trillions of records of you know, what web page was clicked on and what search terms were entered, um, we had to build a custom system for looking at that. We loaded in the variant call information from the 1,000 genomes and now the personal genome project as well um, in order to see whether this query engine could work. And we found that with simple SQL-like queries, we're able to ask useful and interesting questions. And so this was an encouraging first result and was part of why we formed the genomics team. Um, you can also, once you have this information, uh, run in parallel some interesting analysis with it. And so what we have here is 1,000 circles, each representing variant calls from an individual. Um, we used a technique called principal component analysis um, by writing a MapReduce, which is a an algorithm for doing uh, massively parallel analysis. Um, and this ran sort of order of 15 minutes for the personal genome project data. Um, and what you find from this when you project it um, into a two-dimensional view is the clustering of, of the variant calls from all of the different um, members of the 1000 Genomes Project. And so what we see is that there are three distinct clusters. Um, but what do those clusters mean? Well, when we overlay on that the information on population and subpopulation, um, we see that those correlate very strongly with the uh, geographic origins or ancestry of the participants. Um, just yesterday, we got results from running the same type of analysis using uh, the Personal Genome Project data. And this is a little too small to read, but we actually have um, IDs for the Personal Genome Project participants, um, and we can see that data has formed into, it's not clear whether this is two clusters or three and uh, with, with the outliner liars. So we're interested in digging further into this as well. Um, and this, again, is like 15, 15 minutes to run this massively in parallel on the entire data set. Um, so we're, we're excited by the potential for bringing life science and data science together and helping to uncover some, uh, some scientific insights. So with that, you know, what, what can you do to engage with um, Google Genomics? First, um, you can come talk to me. We also have here David Glazer, who's the uh, director for our team. Um, come meet with us individually. Um, here are some URLs for resources online um, showing the things that we're working on with the community and where you can participate. Um, and we have a discussion forum that's open to all. So with that, thank you so much for coming. I can actually close the slides because David Altshuler is going commando style with no slides. <laughs> it's first, the first one all day. It's amazing. <laughs> so I'll just close that, I think. Introducing David is Personal Genome Project staff member Michael Chow. Thanks, Jason. Hi. Thanks, Jason. Um, so yes, I'm uh, Mike Chow. I'm um, Director of Human Subjects Research for the Personal Genome Project, and I should now say the Harvard Personal Genome Project, which is uh, nice to say because we have now have multiple PGPs around the world. Um, and it's my pleasure to introduce David today. Um, David is a, an endocrinologist and a geneticist at MGH, and he's a founding core member of the Broad Institute, um, where he established and runs the Medical Population Genomics Program, and genetics program, sorry. Um, David's been uh, critical uh, in many projects uh, that you're all familiar with and we just heard a little bit about, um, uh, notably the SNP Consortium, the HapMap Project, the Thousand Genomes Project, and he's been involved in dozens of GWAS studies. Um, one theme of David's research has been um, international and collaborative um, projects and they're always inclusive. And recently David was recognized by the White House, is that me? must be. Um, David was recognized by the White House um, uh, for being a champion of change, uh, due in part to a project I hope he will talk to you a little bit about today. And um, so please join me in welcoming David. Yep. So thank you very much for that nice introduction. And uh, it's really a pleasure to be here today. I want to thank the organizers, George and Jason.